opinions expressed on the Chris Ann Hall Show are not necessarily those of the host or station management, but are definitely those of the founders of this nation. Connecting the dots of the Constitution for you like no one else can. The Chris Ann Hall Show. She's an attorney, a disabled U.S. Army veteran, an author, public speaker, mother, pastor's wife, and a patriot. She's Chris Ann Hall. Any informant that crosses that lady's path has met his man. Rise and shine, liberty-loving patriots. It is Friday, Friday, Friday. Open line Friday. I wonder if that's patented. (laughs) Copyrighted. Who cares? Guess what? Today is your day to call in. I want to hear from you. 855-500-8255. 855-500-8255. It is a beautiful 4 a.m. here in Craig, Colorado. There are some really, really great things going on with the Liberty First Ministry. We are working very hard. We had an amazing meeting last night in Craig. And I don't know. uh, I know that there are going to be people listening to this podcast later uh, because 4 a.m. is a little early. But I would like to say uh, good morning, however, to someone who's even earlier than I am. This I am always humbled and always very honored to have people calling in or listening from California. Good morning, Jack from Canoga Park, California. Jack is listening in. He has uh, participated as well by posting on my Facebook page. And um, if you are not going to call in, uh, you're a little shy, post your comments on Facebook and I will address them as well. You can uh, catch my Facebook link by going to my website at chrisannhall.com, K-R-I-S-A-N-N-E-H-A-L-L.com. And I want to hear from you this morning. Now listen, there are some issues we'll just go ahead and start off with this morning. I want to remind you that our... ...your support... The corruption in this state is coming into light. All things in darkness will come into light, and we are hoping to see the cockroaches start to scatter. You'll remember that my friend Bernie Thompson went to speak to Governor Rick Scott's general counsel, gave him evidence that this whole travesty against Sheriff Nicholas Finch, these these totally made-up events that have caused his removal from office, his arrest, his replacement, his harassment, the occupation of Liberty County by Florida Department of Law Enforcement agents, and complete total corruption. And Rick Scott's general counsel has blown it all off. Why? Because we find out Rick Scott's general counsel has a 30-year tie to the corrupt prosecutor going against Nicholas Finch. Willie Meggs, who in my humble opinion, has shown ethical conflict, professional conflict, and inappropriate behavior befitting a prosecutor in this whole case. Hey, Mr. Meggs, I'll just go ahead and talk to you directly this morning. As a former prosecutor, I am offended and ashamed of your behavior. It is not the job of a prosecutor to call up a defendant's attorney and claim that you are going to war. 
Mr. Meggs, that very statement just proves that you have completely lost your professional bearing. And it's time to resign. But you know what? I know. I know that citizens will only tolerate tyranny for so long. And apparently something that I did not know is that Willie Meggs has been this way for quite some time. And he's kept it in the dark. But it's in the light now, Mr. Meggs. And can I remind you, Mr. Meggs, of something that you yourself said? You said, it's always someone else's fight until you get punched in the eye. Can I mention to you, Mr. Meggs, you are nothing but an overgrown schoolyard bully. And I don't know what you've been doing in the past. I don't know who you've been punching in the eye in the past. But please let me mention to you that you've stepped up and punched the wrong people this time. Your schoolhouse bully activity, your playground brawls have turned into an MMA fight. Are you prepared? Are you ready, Mr. Meggs? I just want you to understand something, Mr. Meggs. The people are not going to tolerate this. And I've heard that you claim to be a Christian man. I believe that if you are truly a child of God, God will not allow you to disparage his name and continue in this wicked activity. You have a choice, Mr. Meggs. Your Christianity is on the line. You can repent of this wicked behavior or we can sit back and watch and wait for God to throw up a brick wall and stop you. Make no mistake. All things come to light. Why don't you take the high road, sir? Stop being a persecutor, find your grounding, and become a prosecutor once again. Find your honor, sir, and stop this vindictive prosecution. Speaking of lack of honor this morning, I just want to talk to you about some things that we have been talking about this week. Aside from Obamacare, which you know I have talked about very seriously. I have warned you of the long-term implications of Obamacare, how it will actually give the federal government the legal authority, not constitutional authority, but the legal authority to rule every aspect of your life. Aside from Obamacare, this attack, this preemptive strike on Syria is the most important thing our Congress and Senate will face so far this year. I say so far because given this administration, I don't want to create any red lines in the sand. Because you never know what they're going to come up with tomorrow. But look. We've got to understand. We are being lied to. And it's stunning to me. That after all the lies that have come forward. Through the NSA. Through all the lies that have come forward. Through the IRS. Through all the lies that have come forward through Benghazi, through all the lies that have come forward, through Fast and Furious. It is just shocking. It is just stunning. It is just surreal for me to see the American people 
buying into this garbage. Right? We are supposed to believe the intelligence that the federal government gives us about something as serious as this when this is the same intelligence that they told us they had that that blamed the Benghazi thing on a YouTube video. Critical thinking here, people. That's all I'm asking for. And I was highly disappointed when I saw on Breitbart's page a video about a town hall meeting. The headline saying something, and I don't, I don't have it anymore, but the headline saying something like, Opposition to Syria in McCain Town Hall. I thought I would click on this link and see a video of people opposing John McCain and his stand on Syria. I was quite shocked. I tried to post a comment to express how shocked I was. But for some reason my comment wouldn't go through. But my comment was this. Is this a journalistic video on a town hall meeting or an ad campaign for John McCain. I don't know how long this town hall meeting went. I don't know how much opposition there was. But the only thing that made it to the Breitbart clip was a heckler shouting out and then John McCain telling them to stop being rude and one question. The rest of the video was John McCain giving his stand on Syria and listening to people cheer him on. I'm just, you know, shocked. Not that there'd be cheap people cheering him on. I am sure that there are die-hard Republicans out there that would cheer on Satan himself if he registered as a Republican. I'm just shocked that Breitbart would put up such trite, such kilch. Look, the odds are against us on this one, people. We can't let down our guard. Be strong. Be vigilant. Be brave. Chris Ann Hall Show. The Chris Ann Hall Show. She's Liberty's lobbyist. This is your day on the Chris Ann Hall Show. This is your day to get behind the Liberty First microphone. Call in and be heard, 855-500-8255. Let me hear what you're doing to defend Liberty. Let's address your questions today. You can catch... You can, wait, let me see. You can, put, you can submit your questions on Facebook... And you can find my Facebook page by going to my website, chrisannhall.com, K-R-I-S-A-N-N-E-H-A-L-L.com. And I thought, the thought occurred to me that there's no reason why you can't also tweet me. Tweet your questions or comments. My Twitter account is at chrisannhall, just at chrisannhall. K-R-I-S-A-N-N-E-H-A-L-L, at Chris Ann Hall. You can tweet your questions or comments. And those of you who are listening to the podcast later, why don't you post your questions on Facebook or tweet me uh, as you're listening, and we can address your questions next time. But we do have a caller on the line right now. We have Karen Schoen calling from Panama City. How are you, Karen? 
I'm great, Christine. How are you? And thank you for everything you're doing. And I must say, folks, I've been to Christine's um, seminars many times, and if you have not been, you need to go. Well, thank you very much, Karen. Tell us what you're up to today. Well, I'm running for office. I'm running for State District 5, and that is in Jackson, Washington, Holmes, um, Walton, and a, a, a sliver of Bay County. And I'm hoping that um, to get around, I'm visiting a lot of folks. The area is just absolutely gorgeous, but the folks have lots of problems. And it's very interesting, Chris, and it seems as though no matter who I talk to, no matter where they are in their place in life, um, they all seem to focus around the same two issues. And one of them is their uh, horror at education. Uh, they feel that they've been getting a raw deal and that it, it was not just this year and it was not just Common Core. Um, but they feel that the education is a major issue and they are very disappointed, very unhappy with the system, the way it's working, and the lack of, um, the lack of education there is. And of course the other is the economy and they're very upset with both the federal and the state governments. They feel that their voices are not being heard and they're not being listened to. And I, promise that that's what I am going to do. I'm going to carry their message, and I'm going to make sure that their voices are heard. Now, you have been doing this for quite some time. You are not new to this battle, and you have actually, I met you uh, on the education trail. Uh, we are both be becoming uh, aware, or well, you were already aware, but already fighting the fight to save our children from this government assault and uh, this government uh, progressive agenda in our education program. So I just want to let people know I've known Karen for quite some time, and, and uh, this matter of education has been something that has been on your plate for quite some time. You are a former educator, right? Yes, I am. I was a teacher, a dean, and I worked in the administration. And you know what I realized, Chris Ann? I've been listening to people, like you said, for a long time. And I realized that the second question when somebody talks, like uh, Jesse Waters or uh, someone walks around, like uh, someone from Jay Leno, and they walk in the street and they ask people questions and then the people can't answer them, they never ask the next question, which is, did you learn that in school? Because right. the answer would be no. And when I started realizing what was not being taught as an educator, how can you send kids out and tell them that they should read when you eliminate all the tools that would make them successful? Well, and thank you, Karen. We have, we have just a few seconds left, Karen. I want you to tell people how they can find you. VoteKarenShone.com. Thank you awesome. so much, Chris Ann, for everything. Oh, well, thank you for taking that stand and running for office. Listen, VoteKarenShone.com. Uh, she is a patriot, and she's been fighting this battle for quite some time. Vet her so that you can be confident in your vote for her. Don't take my word for it. But listen, this is something that you can do. This is something that you can do to defend liberty. You can stand. You can stand, run for office, vet candidates, elect real people who are going to stand for you and stand for liberty. Come back after the break. We've got more input from listeners coming. The Chris Ann Hall Show. The opinions expressed on the Chris Ann Hall Show are not necessarily those of the host or station management, but are definitely those of the founders of this nation. The Chris Ann Hall Show. She's Liberty's lobbyist.
This is Call In and Be Heard Day. Put yourself behind the Liberty First microphone. Be heard. Let's hear your concerns. Let's hear your battles. Let's hear your victories. We need to encourage each other in these times. We need to encourage each other to keep moving and keep fighting. Listen. We uh, can take your calls at 855-500-8255, 855-500-8255, and we can also take your questions uh, via Facebook and Twitter. Now, I have a question from Jack in Kenoga, California. Actually, he's just sort of voicing a frustration that I'm sure can resonate with all of us. Sometimes you need to know that other people are frustrated too so that you don't have to feel like you're all alone. And Jack, you're not all alone. Jack says he is very frustrated that Diane Feinstein, can you imagine being forced to have Diane Feinstein as your representative? Can you imagine what that would be like to have Diane Feinstein as your representative. What a, what a shocking fate that would be. I'm just saying. <laughs> but he says, Jack from Canoga, California says, I'm very frustrated at Diane Feinstein's continual stating that we don't know what she knows. And Jack, you're not alone. Because guess what? We hear this all the time. We hear this all the time from the people who are supposed to be representing us. Now what I want to point out to you is that once again, our representatives are just following in the same path that our Framers warned us about. Alexander Hamilton wrote in Federalist Paper 78, No legislative act, therefore contrary to the Constitution, can be valid. To deny this would be to affirm that the deputy is greater than his principle. That the servant is above his master. That the representatives of the people are superior to the can't help but believe. I just can't help but believe that because we have allowed the federal government to act unconstitutionally for so very long that we are dealing with representatives who are falling into the very same warning that Alexander Hamilton gave us because we have allowed their activity to be unconstitutional for so long that we are now suffering from the consequences of this action. I want to ask you, how long are we going to allow them to engage in unconstitutional activity how long are we going to allow this to happen we have got to start addressing these concerns and stop allowing them to behave this way because this issue is what is destroying our representation do you know 
that our framers dealt with this? Our framers did not engage in a revolutionary war based on taxes. Our framers engaged in the revolutionary war because they did not have representation. This is something that we've got to relearn. You see, Great Britain was saying to the people, we are giving you representation. Don't worry about that. We have people who are volunteering to represent your interests. They said, you know what? It's not representation. If the men who make the laws are not required to submit to the laws. The men who make the laws must be required to submit to the laws before it is representation. This is an important aspect to understand. How can we possibly have representation if we continually have people who are no longer who are making the laws who are no longer subject to those laws and Alexander Hamilton warned us that when we allow legislative acts to become contrary to the Constitution we are affirming that the representatives of the people are superior to the people themselves. Why is that? Because the Constitution is the people. The Constitution is the people. And when we allow them to ignore the Constitution, we are giving them permission to ignore us. We have to realize the Constitution is us. It is our voice concerted and organized saying, guess what? Guess what? You are limited by us. We are your boundaries. You cannot exert your efforts on us beyond those boundaries. But when we allow them to uh, engage in unconstitutional laws and unconstitutional activities, we are reinforcing the fact that they're not limited by the Constitution, which means they are not limited by us. So do not be surprised. Do not be shocked when they find themselves superior to the people. That's what Alexander Hamilton was warning us about. Now I have an open letter. I have an open letter to Syria out there that people are using. And guess what? It is being shared. But people are also sharing that with me. Their responses that they're getting from these representatives. I want you to continue sharing your responses with me. Now we have a caller on the line and I'm going to ask him to hold till after the break because I want to give him time to to speak and we're we're coming up on a break so if he'll hold on for just a few minutes I will give him plenty of time to speak I want to make sure we do this so in the meantime I want to read to you a response that somebody got from one of uh, for sending my open letter to Bill Nelson Bill Nelson is our senator here in Florida so that surely wouldn't surprise anyone the response that we're going to get from Bill Nelson. 
Bill Nelson says, thank you for sharing your thoughts about the situation in Syria. I think everyone can agree that the use of chemical weapons there is cause for moral outrage. Some argue against a U.S. response, but I agree with President Obama, Secretary of State Kerry, and many of the GOP leaders, such as Senator McCain, Senators McCain and Graham, that it is in our nation's best interest to hold accountable a dictator who uses weapons of mass destruction and slaughters innocents. We also believe we should limit our nation's direct military involvement. I very much appreciate hearing from you on this important issue. Varied perspectives help me be a better public servant. Thank you. Seriously? See, this is why John McCain and Lindsey Graham need to be chastised publicly by the Republican Party because they have become fodder against the people. They have become the ammunition that the Democrats use against us, and I am convinced of this. I don't care what you say to me. I am convinced of this. I am convinced that John McCain and Lindsey Graham are plants from the Democratic Party, that they are really Democrats whose whole purpose is to be ammunition used against us. Because, you remember, this whole Senate thing says, oh, we are limiting boots on the ground. We will be opposed to boots on the ground. In that Breitbart thing that I told you about, this speaking uh, town hall, this town hall thing that John McCain did, he says, I am wholly opposed to boots on the ground. We will limit boots on the ground. And yet, John Kerry says, well, there may just have to be boots on the ground. Really? Do you know the Pentagon issued a report in 2012 that said 75,000 ground troops will be needed to secure serious chemical weapons? I'm just trying to tell you, you can't trust these people. Don't give them any more power. Stick with us from the, after the break. The Chris Ann Hall Show. The Chris Ann Hall Show. She's Liberty's lobbyist. Live behind the Liberty First microphone, bringing you the truth your representatives don't want you to hear, the truth based on historical fact, and the amazing, amazing, brilliant insight of the framers of this nation. Ah, we lost Michael from Arizona. Michael, I'm sorry. Just hold on. Call back. (laughs) <laughs> we have just a few more minutes left in the show. Listen, I want you to understand what we're doing here. I want to make sure that we are spending time encouraging each other. Spending time encouraging each other in this battle. This is not an easy battle to do on our own. You know, my friend Daryl Day comes on um, 30 minutes after my show. You can reach him at the same number, 855-500-8255. Call and encourage him, too. Listen, this, this, this Syria thing should be really upsetting to us. I want you to be sure that if you are opposed to this if you are opposed to this war in Syria and may I suggest to you that you should be please send my open letter please send my open letter to your senator to your congressman and may I ask you to please send it to them 
every day for 30 days. Every day for 30 days. And we will make sure that they get the point. Sending it to them just once is not going to help us because then you're just going to get that letter like I got from a, a, a listener who received a letter from Bill Nelson. Don't let them get away with that garbage. Press them. Look, John Kerry himself has revealed that Arab countries have offered to pay America to carry out a full-scale invasion of Syria. If the Saudis funding this military action is not enough for you to see what is really, really going on here, and it has nothing to do with chemical weapons, then I'm sorry, I can't help you. There's nothing that you're going to be able, there's nothing that we are going to say that's going to make any difference to you whatsoever. But the fact that Saudi Arabia is willing to pay for this should be the very reason we refuse. Listen, I want you to understand something. My husband and I had this conversation. I said, well, surely when Congress gets wind of the fact that Saudi Arabia is going to pay for our military invasion of Syria, the congressman surely will not vote for that then. You know what my husband did? He laughed. He said, seriously? He said, that will make them vote yes. Their biggest concern right now is this is going to cost billions of dollars. How are we going to fund this? My husband is convinced, knowing that it will be funded and we don't have to pay for it, will be just enough to throw your congressman over the edge and to vote for this. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Why would we, excuse my French, pimp out our men and women in uniform to be the servants of the Saudi Arabian government? Let the United Nations pimp out their forces. Our military is not for hire. Allow this to happen. This is what this is all about. This is the Saudis bidding. Remember, it's the Saudis who put Barack Obama through college. Are we surprised now that they feel that they have an open door to our White House? That our military is at their bidding since the commander-in-chief is their subject? There are some serious holes in this whole picture. We are accusing the Syrian military of launching chemical weapons. But in 2012, CNN, December of 2012, CNN reported the U.S. military was training the Syrian rebels, was training them on how to secure and handle chemical weapons. Under the name of Destructive Wind Chemical Battalion, the insurgents themselves even threatened to use nerve gas and released a video where they killed rabbits as a demonstration of what they planned on doing in Syria. Are we that stupid that we forget what happened? What we saw on CNN on December of 2012. Don't let this happen. Our military, our men and women in uniform do not want to do this. They are protesting anonymously. We have to stand for them. Don't let them get away with this. Don't let them get away with this. Listen. I'm sorry, Michael. We, we're out of time. Listen in on Monday. <laughs>